to be standing here in front of you this afternoon and then share uh, the Word of God. Because the Word of God is a timeless Word. Now, God's Word is not confined to only one season. But uh, as uh, 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 Paul told Timothy, you know, to preach the Word in season and out of season. Now, in season, out of season. And so there is only two seasons you know, for the Word of God. That is in season and out of season. And I take this privilege you know, to share uh, uh, the Word of God this uh, uh, new year, you know, 2024. My first uh, uh, message uh, in this uh, Agape Church. And I'm glad to, to take this opportunity. I will not read the passage again because uh, we have read uh, together the passage. <coughs> Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses uh, 10 to 25 and I want to caption my topic as you know, it's a warning you know, it's a warning be careful you know, of when you are rich or when you are well to do you know, or when you, God bless you abundantly you know, complacency sometimes uh, we forget and we think that Everything that we have achieved is by our own, right? We think in that way, and then we always say, I did it, I did this, I did that, right? I achieved this, I achieved that. And then we want to take the glory for ourselves. And we forget to acknowledge. We, for, we are forgetting that God is the one behind our every success. Whether in your work, whether in your studies, whether in your ministry, whether in your family, God is behind that. It's not because of our own. It's not because of our ability. It's not because of our you know, uh, knowledge or the degree that we have. And so here, Moses is warning. You know, Moses is warning the new generation. Now, when Moses wrote this uh, Deuteronomy, this second law, he was uh, repeating the law that was given to the new generation who were born in the wilderness, the 40 years wilderness. And so he is telling them that this is how God has led you. No? Your fathers provided them and then you were slave and then God no, gave you the freedom, free you from slavery. And then God is taking you to a new place where it is flowing with milk and honey. And so he said, when you reach that place, when your stomach is full, when you are in good health, when you started to prosper, no, when you started to succeed, I mean to succeed in your life, no, he said, don't forget. Don't forget God. No. Don't forget who you were. Sometimes we are very proud. No? We are very proud. We forget who we were. No, we forget who we were. I always tell my children. No? I always tell my children who I was and who my parents are and how they struggle and how they suffer and then how we came to this stage. I always tell my children because they, they may think that you no know, we were well to do family and then without any problem that uh, we have come to this stage because our children does not know how we struggle how we suffer and that's the reason why uh, uh, from verse 20 you know, Moses was reminding the new generation that you have to pass on this message to the new generation we are living in a, you know, in a fast changing world. And now the, the AI is dominating, right? Artificial intelligence is dominating. They can even, you know, they can even uh, uh, take, you know, copy your voice and then message to your parents with the, with the distressing message that you are in trouble, send money, you know, give this. You know, people scam. And even children are so, so fast in coping with this uh, changing world. 
especially you know I'm very weak in this uh, technology and sometimes I ask my uh, uh, no sometimes we used to have a zoom meeting and sometimes I don't know how to no, go to the zoom and I call my son no, and then he will come and help me to do all those things they're very they're very smart right they're very smart and so they, they, they think that no, they think that no, their parents were no, in this position. And so we can we can uh, we can give in another in another message. You know, we can give another title is like protecting the future generation through historical experience of redemption. No, protecting our future generation, protecting our children's uh, future. Because if we don't tell them, if we don't warn them. We don't know how they will end. And God knew who these people were. They were no, they were stiff-necked, no hard-hearted people. And so the first thing that God told to Israelites is before he warned them, I mean before he tell them to fear God, to obey his commandments, he said in verse 10, no, he said in verse 10, he said. And when the Lord your God brings you to the land that he swore to, that he swear to your fathers, no, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and to give you with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of all good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and the vineyard and olive trees that you did not what? Plan. See, <clears throat> God's blessing is always abundant and ready-made. <clears throat> God's blessing, he said, I'm going to bless you abundantly. Wonderful things I'm preparing for you. I'm preparing a bright future for you. See, I'm preparing a bright future for you. No, God is always on time. And you know what is best for us. So whatever God gave us, I think that is the best for us. See? And so he said that your the cities that I'm going to give you, you no, know, it's it's a it's a it's a fertile land. You no, know? whatever you sow, you no, know, is fruitful. It's beautiful, you no, know? flowing with <clears throat> milk and honey. You did not build. See. For example, no, you are in need of um, something. No, you are in need of something. And God sent somebody no, to, to give you. That's ready-made, right? That's not, uh, that is not what you earn. But God sent somebody to give you that one. See, God already prepared through someone to meet your needs. So God's Blessings is abundant and ready-made. Now God is going to give the Israelites a ready-made blessings to enjoy. And sometimes we think that those ready-made blessings is because of our no good works, because of our no uh, 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 the, the the strength that we have, or maybe because of our good works or good words. No, no. it is God. Who not prepare a ready made and then give it to you? And that is the one that that uh, meet your needs. See? So God's blessing is always abundant. No, it's always abundant, plenty, no shortage. See? God will not uh, uh, provide no, which is a shortage for your needs. He always prepare. No? He always supply. What you need, right? What you need. So God's blessing is almost abundant and it's ready made. So he told the Israelites that I'm going to give you a land, you know, a city, a well, you know, <coughs> cistern for water, and then vineyard, you know, olive, everything that I'm going to give you. It's already prepared for you. And so the best thing is we have to wait for God's uh, purpose and plan for our life. Of God's purpose and plan for you. Now, these Israelites are God's chosen people. And today, we are also God's chosen people. We are God's chosen people. And every day He prepares. Every day He meets our needs. Every day He supplies. 
ready-made, right? Ready-made abundant and ready-made uh, uh, blessings of God. And so he told them that I'm preparing those things for you. And then the next verse, and then verse uh, 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 12. Then take care, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Verse 13. It is the Lord your God, you shall fear him. You shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are around you. Now God is giving them a warning. Now I'm preparing a, 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 no, a beautiful place. No, everything is ready made. Now you go and enjoy it. But when you start enjoying God's blessings, He said, never forget. See, never forget where the blessings come. Never forget that you were a slave and God performed so many miracles and brought you out of Egypt. Never forget that throughout your 40 years wilderness journey, you never go hungry. You never go thirsty. See? Night time, the glory of the Lord no, shine. And they stay like their time bright. During their time in the desert, God sent the cloud and then give them the sh the, no, no, the the shed, right? To <clears throat> protect them from the heat of the desert. So God is reminding them you know, of their former life. The second one is before you go and enjoy, I've already prepared, but remember who you are. Don't be so proud. No, don't, don't, don't think that because of your strength, because of your military power, no, because of your ability that you occupy the land, that you are enjoying. No, 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 no. That's, that's not going to happen. So God, God told him that that's not going to happen. No, there is a tendency, no, as a human being, to be proud of who we are and who we were. <clears throat> I remember, uh, I remember a genuine story. You know, this happened in our place. He, a man, pastor for many years in his uh, church, and then uh, after some time, uh, you no, know, he he resigned from the from the pastoral ministry, and then he start uh, business. He start business. <clears throat> he started with the uh, uh, pharmacy. Because uh, everybody needs medicine, right? Usually, pharmacies, uh, you know, business flourish uh, very fast. And then it's a remote area, you know, it's a remote area. So, that was the only pharmacy, you know, that was the only pharmacy, I think, uh, uh, out of uh, 18, I think, 18 villages. Only one pharmacy. And surrounding is 18, 18 villages. And no pharmacy. So they come there for buying medicine. And so the business, uh, you know, boom, you know, just flourish. <clears throat> and then he was, he was pastor and then he resigned that. And when his business started to flourish, you know, he started to drink, he started to smoke, and then he indulged in many, so many things, you know, <clears throat> so many things, ex-pastor. And so a man of God went and, uh, and uh, counseled him and uh, told him that, uh, you know, remind him of his uh, past uh, pastoral ministry. And then he said, no brother, you know, let me chase this uh, word, you know, let me chase this business. And then while chasing, you no, know, while chasing, you no, know, one day he made a car accident and died. Before he enjoyed, you no, know, <clears throat> before he enjoyed his business. That is the same thing that God is reminding to the Israelites and to each one of us. Sometimes, you no, know, sometimes we we may be you no, know, we may be tempted, right? We may be tempted. You know, we may be tempted. That's why, you no, know, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, the devil went, the devil went Satan tempted Jesus Christ, and he said, I will give you all this universe. Everything belongs to me. I own this world and I will give you if you bow down and yeah, 
You don't need to do anything. Just go down and worship and everything is yours. And you know what they say? <clears throat> no. The Bible said, no. You shall fear the Lord and worship Him only. Verse 12. See? Then take care of yourself, lest you forget who brought you out of Egypt. And then verse 13. It is the Lord your God. You shall what? Fear. It is the Lord and Him you shall serve and worship. <clears throat> Whatever we have, it belongs to God. No. We are not the, we are just caretaker. We are not the owner. We are just caretaker. And God wants us no, to always no, to always remind ourselves that what I have belongs to God. It's a blessing. And so while eating, no, while enjoying your no, your ministry, no your fruitful ministry, your fruitful studies, your fruitful work, your fruitful uh, 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 business. Hmm? We should not forget. We should not forget. Even at that juncture, no? we should fear God. We should worship and serve Him only. And <clears throat> why God want this one? Because we know. No? We know. This is a repeated history. No? For the Israelites, if you read the book of Judges, they occupied the land and then they started to enjoy. And what happened? They started to follow and worship other, you no, know, the Canaanites, uh, uh, God that these uh, other people were worshiping. <clears throat> and so God, you no, know, punished them. And then they will repent. And then for 20 years, for 40 years, you no, know, they will be enjoying, right? They will be living a peaceful life. And then when they are well to do, again, the thing that they have done, their achievement is by their own strength. So again, they started worshiping other, following other gods. And then God will punish them. You see, God will punish them. As a human being, we have that tendency. So <clears throat> it says that, lest <clears throat> you forget, right? In verse uh, 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 14, and you shall not <clears throat> follow or you shall not worship other gods, the gods of the people who are around you. See? <clears throat> who are around you. Don't worship them. Don't follow their, their gods. And then it, verse 12, then take care lest you forget the Lord. You see? Because, as I said, that is repeated in Judges. They forget God and then God uh, will punish them and when they cried out to God, God, uh, God choose a, a, a leader, right? Deliverer, and then God will deliver them, and then they will have a, they will have a, a, a peaceful life for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 80 years, and then they will they will uh, go back to their own life of uh, of uh, this one uh, apostasy, following other gods, and then God has to punish them. And then when they cried out to God, and then God will lead, I mean, raise a deliverer. That is what, I mean, we see this, because God said, lest you forget. See, you, I know, because you have tested, you have tempted me, right? For the Lord your God in your midst is a jealous God, lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you, and it destroy you from all, and from all, the face of the earth. See, if you forget God, if you don't obey Him, if you don't fear Him, if you don't love Him, if you don't serve Him and serve other gods, <coughs> God is going to destroy you. God will destroy you. God will punish you, and He will destroy you from the face of the earth. And then, the, and so, and then. The, 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 the next one is do not no do not test the Lord. He said, don't test the Lord your God. Don't test the Lord your God. In Exodus, I mean uh, uh, yeah, in Exodus chapter 17, no, we see that how they have tested the Lord God at the uh, Masa no, when there was no water. They, they started to complain, no. Against Moses, and he said, that, You brought us from Egypt to this place to kill us. We have no water to drink. See? 
And then they started to, to complain against God. They have tested God. No, they have tested God. And so it says, verse 16, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you have tested him at Massa. As you have tested him at Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. <coughs> said, said, oh, what God is providing? What he has done for me? Sometimes we speak in that way, right? You see, we, we, we started to test God. But why? Said, why only me? Why only my family? Why only my children? Why only my ministry? Why only my health? Why only my business? Why only my work? No, we started to grumble, right? We started to complain. That you are not doing anything. You are not providing. You are not healing. We started to complain. But God has done so much for Israelites. God has done so much for you. God has done so much for me. And still, we try to test God by complaining against uh, His goodness, against His blessings. We grumble, no? we complain. And so He said that, uh, no, don't test the Lord your God as you have tested Him at Massa. He provided. For 40 years, no, they, they ate meat. For 40 years, they ate manna, no. There was no work. See, just. Eat and sleep, eat and sleep. Right? Eat and sleep, eat and sleep. Eat meat, eat mana, sleep. No. And then eat mana, eat meat and sleep. For 40 years. Just imagine the life that they were living, right? They were living. And then they complain. Again, they grumble. No? They tested God. So <clears throat> God said that, don't test me saying that, no. God is tempting me. That's what we are told by James. No. Don't say that God is tempting you. No, God is tempting you. So we started to complain, we started to murmur, and so he told the Israelites, don't test me again, as you have tested me at Massa. See, I am providing, I am giving you. And then verse 17, you shall diligently keep the commandments. See, keep his commandments. Follow his instruction because there is life. God gave them a choice, you know, life and death. If you obey, fear and serve me, you have life. If you disobey me, if you serve other gods, then what? Destruction. I will inhale it, I will destroy you. And so he said not to test God for what he is doing in their life. And in verse 18, and you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may go well with you, and that you may go in and take possession of the good land that the Lord swore to your fathers by trust, trusting out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has promised. No. <clears throat> he said that, and you shall do what is right. And you shall do what is right. So what is right in the sight of God? No. You may be thinking that what is right in the sight of God that I need to do and no, we need to do. Micah chapter 6 verse 8, 6 to 8. No, Micah. Prophet Micah chapter 6 and then 6 to 8. Let, let, let me read. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With gulfs a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And the last one is very important. He has told you, O oh men, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before your God. That is the thing that God wants us to to do good. In other words, <clears throat> what? to love God, to fear God, to keep His commandments, to obey God, to love our neighbors, to forgive our enemies. That's 
that's right, right? Doing right because we are told that you love your neighbor. You see, love your enemy. We are told not to hate uh, our enemy, but to love our enemies. Sometimes it's very difficult, but that is what right in the sight of God. See, doing right, doing justice. No, speaking on behalf of uh, the poor. Having a compassion for the lost soul. That is what God expects us. No. What is right? What is right? Because it says that you shall do what is right. Right? And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of God. When you love your enemies. When you <clears throat> forgive your enemies. No. Forgive the one who no, do harm if you forgive them. If you love your enemies, love your neighbor. I think that is right. To obey God, to fear God, no? to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our no being. When we love God, that's what God wants us to do. To walk humbly before God, not to love mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly before God. And then the last one is, uh, and <clears throat> that is uh, training or warning the next generation to watch themselves. See? He said, when your children now ask you why, why we need to love God, why we need to <clears throat> fear Him, what is the what is the point of uh, keeping God's commandment? What is the point of uh, no? Knowing what God has done for us. He said, you pass on this commandment to the next generation so that they will have a fruitful and a peaceful life. Because if you don't warn them, they may become worse, right? They may become worse. And I will destroy them. No, I will <coughs> destroy <coughs> them. And then, when your son asks you in the time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the studies and the rules that the Lord your God has commanded? Then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. You see, you have to tell your children that you were a slave for four, more than 400 years and then God performed wonderful 10 miracles which is, uh, which is a sign or punishment to the Egyptian who slaves us. And then God parted the, the Red Sea. And God destroyed the Egyptian soldiers. God provided the manna for 40 years. God provided meat for 40 years. God provided water in the desert. All those testimonies. You tell your children that why God perform those things. See? Why God perform those wonderful miracles? <clears throat> and then, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, with a miraculous sign that God has brought them. And then it says that, and He brought us out from there. Then He might bring us and give us the... So God <clears throat> performed all those miracles and brought us into this beautiful land that we did not plan, no, that we did not dig well for water. We're enjoying no, ready-made blessings, ready-made cities, ready-made waters, no, ready-made field to enjoy. It's not because of your good works. It's not because of your ability. No. God said, no, I'm not giving you this beautiful land flowing with milk and honey because you are a wicked, stiff-necked, disobedient people. But in spite of that, I gave you because I love you, right? God's grace. God's amazing grace. And so, and the Lord commanded us to do this, all these studies to fear the Lord our God, good, and to do good always, that He might preserve us alive as we are to this day. And it will be righteous for us if we are careful to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He has commanded us. <clears throat> as He has commanded us. Talking about God's love, talking about God's redemptive work, talking about God's miracle, talking about God's leading hand, talking about
talking about God's provision, God's uh, uh, protection, God's providence, and keeping God's commandment is a must to pass on to our children. We have to. No, we have to. Because, as I say, it's a fast-growing world. It's a fast-growing world. And the world is invaded. No? The whole world is invaded <coughs> with the technology. And AI is going to, artificial intelligence is going to rewrite the Bible, you know. And they are going to eliminate uh, homosexual, they are going to eliminate sin, they are going to, uh, they are going to eliminate the word uh, 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 <coughs> hell, they are going to eliminate the world uh, 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 heaven. They are going to eliminate all this world, these words. And if our children read, read those Bible, for example, unfortunately, if those Bible, no, rewritten uh, the Bible through artificial intelligence, because those artificial, definitely the artificial intelligence is controlled by human being, and those human beings are atheists, and they are going to rewrite, so they are going to remove all these things, and what will happen, right? See what will happen. And so <clears throat> we need to teach the word of God. You know? We need to pass on the the the, the very word of God you know, unchanging.